find this clapper. There it is. There it is. I found the clapper. Fellas, fellas. How you doing? Damn. Man? How you doing? What's going on, y'all? Congratulations, sir. Appreciate you, Sean. Thank you, man. <laughs> hey, man, listen. Very, very proud of you, man. Thank you, bro. The I you you guys had uh quite a blueprint that y'all uh that y'all came to the ring with. Let's start there, man. Um the training camp <clears throat> and into the fight. I mean, like it seemed to me like you were beyond ready. Is that how you felt as you entered the ring? Um, yeah, like Sean, you know, it, it all it all comes together in camp, you know. Like um, I just felt that I had I, like I had a great camp and I, I knew what I had to do. You know, I, I, when it came down to the fight, like everything, like I, I, like I was telling myself, as you like before that ring walk, you know, I, I would just, you know, that that, just that, that that split moment to myself, I was saying like, okay, this is what we work for. This is, we know why we're here. We didn't come here just to, you know, lay down and roll over, especially way out here. And, you know, I, just, I, I, I was just at ease. I just had that, that, that I was just calm and, yeah. and just focused. And I, and I was, I was well, well prepared because I, I, I knew, I had several game plans in my head the way, like, you know, how you play out the fight in your head. So I knew there was several ways it can go. Yeah. I was like, there's no way he can outbox me. So I know his thing is going to try to basically get in. But if he gets in, I, we have we have a formula for that as well. Was this your first camp with Bo Matt? No, no. This is actually the, um like, I think like the fifth or sixth. Oh, okay. This was, okay. Like, like since, I, since I've been with Tyrek, right, I've been with um, with Bill Oh, Bo right okay, 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 okay. Right. So, yeah, man, you you seem to have like really settled in over there. What's yeah? This was the number one question I have for you. I'm gonna let my guys jump in, but I and and I was like, man, I don't know if he's gonna answer this question, but what's going on over there, man? Like Bo <laughs> Mac is, is making it work. What's going on over there? You ain't gotta say too much because I get it. But you know what's going man, on over there? It's, it's it's one of those things where like it's comes down to trust, and what I mean by that is like Sean, you've been around just as long as I've been around the game, mm. like, and we've been to seeing different camps. Like, you have, like, great trainers, like, maybe like a Freddie Roach. But if the, if the chemistry and trust isn't there, you can't, you, you can, really that much you can do as a trainer or as a fighter. You know, mm. you have to, everybody has to be on the same level. And it just, like, it just fit, it just fit well with me because, as you know, you know, I started out with Mike Stafford. Love Mike Stafford. Um mm. You know, love, love Adrian. I was, I was with them when you and Adrian had fought. I was, I was yeah. training with them. But like, yeah. the you focus was, the focus so me? much wasn't. Yeah, was. was <laughs> yeah the, the focus so yeah. much. <laughs> yeah. Was you rooting against so, me? Like, but you Answer know, like, the question. Like, hey, was you rooting they, against me? <laughs> nah, because you, because you know, you know, because you know, I got love for your father like crazy. You know, you know, your father's my guy. So like yeah. me, I was just like, I looked at, it, I was just a neutral guy at the time. I was just like, you know, I'm looking forward to a good fight. Yeah, and, you know I mean, I was there, but like, no, but, but to your I, point though. But, but yeah, what point. I was saying is like this: like the 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 focus wasn't always so much on me. I wasn't, yeah. you know, I wasn't at A B status. You know what I mean? I was still trying to find my way, and you know, and, and footing. So, but mm -hmm. and I I just didn't get that right attention. And you know, Mike's you know Mike's a good guy and a good coach, but it's, at times it, I, I just wasn't getting that the, the proper attention that I needed. Mm -hmm. um, as with Bowman, it's like this: like when it's your camp, it's your camp. You're the main focus. You're the, you're the prime objective, mm -hmm. and there's no egos. You know, there's no egos with, with, with Terrence or, or this one. Everyone gets their you know their, their proper share, and, and for me, it, it, it just it just goes it goes a lot easier, and, and it flows. Well, I'm gonna pass the mic, but I I want to say, man, I'm proud of you. You have found your footing, and and you you solidified that the other night, man. I'm proud Thank of you. For that. Thank you, bro. Like Sean said, I think that was the best, and not to say you haven't looked good recently. I think that was the best you've looked recently. Right. Um, do you think coming off that last fight where there's a lot of outside noise with the circumstances that you felt maybe a little more juice to, to get, you know, a stoppage highlight win? Oh, yeah. Um, I was so much looking for the stoppage, but just looking, coming off, you know, a great performance overall, period. Like, um, I knew what Frampton brought to the table. Like, I, like for me, I always had a great deal of respect for him. I've been a fan. I, I you know, expressed that throughout, throughout the whole buildup. Like, it was no trash talk for me. I was just, I would just want, I just wanted the opportunity to show that what was seen in September that wasn't who I am. You know what I mean? And I needed, I just needed that that proper dance partner, not just anybody, but the right dance partner with the right name and the right, you know, and who brought the the right amount of attention to bring the best out of me. 
Yeah, and di- you heard all the comments before the fight. He kept talking about retirement, retirement. You know, <laughs> usually you guys talk about, I'm going to win, I'm going to knock this guy out. Mm-hmm. But did you feel like I'm going to sign these retirement papers for you? Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing, like, as a fighter, and like I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, like I said again, I know Sean can, yeah. can bounce off of that. It's like, once you start speaking into things of that nature, it's basically like you already got one foot out the door. And even at the press conference, he tried to basically revert that to me. Like, this is a, oh, one of a fight. If the loser loses, you know. And I was like, hold up. Like, wait no, a second. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not even, I'm not even thinking my, like, losing never came to my mind. And, yeah. and, like, even if I did lose, retirement wasn't the next thing in my mind as, as well. I was just thinking, like, the whole time, like, I'm going to win this fight. And even if somehow I don't win this fight, I, retirement still never came to mind. But, like, when I started, like, seeing things that, and hearing things from his camp, I started to think, like, you know, if, if his head is in it, because, like, you know, the saying goes, boxing is 80% mental, 20% physical. Like, we always, you, you'll always come across a fighter that has all the talent in the world, but if he doesn't have the right mindset, you know, there's not so much, there's not so far he can get. Now, you know, uh, Larry Merchant used to always say that, about one foot out the door if you're already talking retirement. Right. Um, but I, I think you correct me if I'm wrong, Jamel. Like after the Okendo fight, did you mention retirement yourself? And then yeah, and I, and I very, yeah, and I, I'm glad you asked that. And I and I basically mentioned that because I didn't know what the COVID, how you know, the lasting effects would do to my body. Like in that fight, I just wasn't reacting well to anything. Like I didn't have that that you know, that same endurance that you guys usually see me with. Like, I didn't have that, that 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 gas tank I'm used to having. And I thought, like, you know, like I said, the pandemic is new to all of us. So we don't, we still, we're still learning as we go. So, but at the time, it's like, man, even like I passed with, you know, negative results, my body is still feeling everything that that's, that, that hit me weeks ago. Something like, you know, I, I still train, but it's like I still couldn't hit that mark to where I feel the best at my game. And I just wasn't sure if I, you know, if my body would be able to handle a guy such as Carl Frampton, because I knew what he was gunning for. Like, it's hard, like I said, once again, ment- the mental aspect, his his mentality was history. You know, he was trying, he wanted to go out doing something big. And it was like, it wasn't so much of me fighting the physical form of Carl Frampton. I had to beat, you know, the guy who had that will to make history by any means. And it was like, if I wasn't at my best, I wouldn't have, like, I, I, I say it all the time. If I would have fought him in September, I wouldn't have won that fight. There's mm-hmm. no way I can do it. And I'm saying, like, but I, as a as a champion, I was still saying that I, I committed myself to making that fight. So if that's my last fight, then so be it. But we'll have to, like, we'll see. But, like, you know, once I went home and got the proper rest, I got that. And started watching, you know, watching all the fights and everything going around me. That's why I got my hunger for because I love the sport so much. And, you know, once I got that hunger back, that was my determination. It was, it was more of redemption now to redeem myself from the Okendo fight and, and go into the um, the Frampton fight with a whole new aspect. You know, we always talk about that it's it's almost too quick for the what's next after a nice win. Obviously, you have a great win over the weekend. Right. Is it is it a little frustrating that you have – I mean, there's not a time to reflect on this. It's like 30 days. <laughs> Good luck. So is that a little frustrating for you? Um, no, because, I mean, like I said, me, me and Sean, no, it, it comes with it. It comes with the game. Like, you you, you already have a sense of what's going to happen next before you even get your hand raised. Like, you know everything, that, especially with the politics of boxing. You know everything. You hear everything that's going on. So, you already have a sense what's to come next. So, but for me, you know, I'm just like – I'm still just enjoying my moment. And, you know, I'm not – I'm not feel like I'm being pressured or anything like that. Like, it's it just, it just the business of boxing. But, I mean, it is what it is. After, okay. after a successful run on the amateur, what what drove you to join the Marines? Um, I just like I, you know I came from a place where there wasn't that, there wasn't much going on, okay. but you no know, trouble. And at the time, okay. I was like, I well, I'm not a street guy. You know, it's not me. It's not I'm first one. I've never been a street guy. Like I like I always had to stay busy to keep myself away from you know to do or to get dealing with the streets. And at the time, it was like you know I didn't. I wasn't like I was. I was a good student in high school, but at the same time, I wasn't just the one to say, "Well, I want to go to college." So that was my way out, though. That was my way yeah. out of getting away from everything that was going on in my environment. So that's why. That's why I joined the Marine Corps. And how 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 competitive was this Marine boxing? 
I mean, you know, it, it was competitive. It was comp- you know, it was competitive because, like, at the time, like I said, I was around when they when, when Sean was still in the amateurs, and then, like, you still had to like balance out your Marine Corps, um, you know, career. And but if you wanted to box, you know, yeah, the, the, um, getting on a team was it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't too rough, but it was like, but that national level is when you had to really okay. focus, and that's when I like. Like that's when I really like was like like really like studying the amateur system more and more. Like it was rough. Like I missed the um like because of deployments and everything. Like, I missed going to like the um 07, 08 trials and, and things of nature. But I watched like guys like Sean, Danny Jacobs, all those guys. You know the Keith Thurmans, all those guys you see today now who became champions. And you know, and it was like you. Like if you wanted to make your mark, you had to do it on those nat- on that national level, on that national scene. Even if you didn't even make the Olympics, you still wanted to make your name and make your mark. Because I always tell like I, like I always tell kids today, like you know, kids today because boxing now is is, is everywhere. You know, it's, it's on it's on streaming services and, it, and every different networking name now. So these kids they see they see the all the limelight. But I always tell these kids like, yo, no, you need to um. The amateur system to me is like your bot. It's like your job resume. Yeah, Build your yeah. resume up. Yeah. On 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 these on these na- on the national or an international scene if you're lucky, and be- before you decide to make that that pro scene. So that's why I always you know I always you know give my respect and thanks to the amateur program because like I said a lot of those guys who I see now like Sean and the rest of them, they all became we all became world champions. But we we and, but it's all credit to what we learned in that experience from the amateur background. Hey, listen, I got a funny story, man. When I was eight, nine years old, we were going to, to national tournament, the uh, state fair. Back when I was little, the state fair was one of the bigger. Yeah, the state fair was one of the biggest to- <laughs> national tournaments back then. Yeah, when I was when I was little, when I was eight, nine years old, it was like it was bigger than the U.S. championships. Yeah. That's how that's how big the uh, fair was. And when I went to the fair, I saw the Marines. I had no clue, nothing about the Marines at all. All I saw was red and yellow. And I seen about. 20 guys. I'm smaller, so it seemed like a whole bunch of guys <laughs> knocking, knocking heads. I remember when I was eight, nine years old, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be a Marine. I'm going to fight for them. <laughs> I, I didn't know what it was. Right. I got a little bit older, right? And, and one, obviously, I find out what it is and all that. I'm like, hmm, I could still do that. <laughs> I go to a national tournament, right? And I draw a Marine and 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 I'm 17. The Marine is in his 20s, right. and I wipe I wipe him out right after I wiped him out. I was like I was like, no, nah, I'm cool on the Marine. I was, like, oh. <laughs> I was hoping it was going to end with him beating the dog shit out of you. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, not. I, I can say yeah, man. Like not it was not, but it, but it's it, it was like that, man. Like it was rough because a lot of the times, like we didn't have um that 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 yeah, y'all didn't, y'all didn't have what we had. Like I saw y'all when I was eight nine years old. Right. A lot of the Marine guys, y'all don't start boxing until y'all get into the program. Yeah, a lot, yeah, a lot of the guys, some, some, of them, some, of them get, so yeah, some of them, they, they wasn't boxing until they got in the service because there was a way of them, you know, just getting away from things. So a lot of that, that was the case. But for me, I was thinking of that, I, like, I was looking at it as if I can gain more experience now that I can get to these tournaments. Because like mm-hmm. Sean knows, when you got Amateurs, like I, that's why I give credit to amateur coaches because you doing this for the love of the sport. You, you right. come out your own pocket. Right. To, you know, to get to these tournaments. But, like, you know, in the Marine Corps, they had the funding and everything like that. So, like, I was taking full advantage of that. But, yeah, mm-hmm. man, like, I had to go out there and represent because, yeah, I mean, it wasn't even just Marines. It was in the Army team. They would get dog. Like, I mean, because <laughs> they, they would get a ride. They, they, would, they would, like, the military would always get a slot. Yeah. And, um. At the for the trials. Hey, okay. we hated y'all. We hated. Yeah, they y'all. hated it. <laughs> we hated two, y'all. Oh, they get here just for one, maybe two fights, and they get a, a slide at the um, at the you know at, at the Olympic trials. So we knew we had a target on our back. I was like, man, I never forget. Like even like when I when I had competed at the 2011 trials, like I was like literally like like the eighth seed. Yeah. And, but uh, but like you know, and Sean tell you is a winners bracket and a loop. But I, I I stayed in the winners bracket throughout the. The whole thing, and I, and, I, and I won it all. You know what I mean? And I was fighting guys, and I was fighting guys. Like it's, it's a funny story. It, I think the the Olympic trials was actually like my first major national championship mm-hmm. title that I won. I won the U.S. nationals afterwards, but that's that's never that's unheard of. Usually, you got guys winning the PAL, yeah. the national Golden Gloves, USA Nationals. Yeah. My first big national tournament was the trials, and then. 
that's when I was still learning. Like Sean was there when I was in, like when we was in camp out in the Colorado Springs. Yeah, man. I was still learning as I, I was learning on the go. Like these guys yeah. at the time, they had like um like 200 amateur fights. I was still yeah. had I still like when I finished, when I left the amateurs at the Olympics, I still had under 100 amateur fights. Yep, yep. Let me let me say this <laughs> because y'all always had a target on your back because y'all got an automatic bid into the trials. Right. You weren't supposed to win the trials. No. no. And, and, and what I saw you do the other night, I'm going to be honest with you. I said, okay, Frampton is probably going to take this. Right. Frampton's got the m- more experience. I, Frampton's been ferocious in the past, all that kind of stuff. So I was like, okay, Frampton's probably going to take this. But of course, knowing you, seeing where you come from and all that, there's a part of me that's saying, I want your male to do his thing. Right. You come out and you start doing your thing. The other night was not supposed to happen. No. The same way you weren't supposed to win. The trials wasn't supposed to happen. You go to world. You go now. You go to U.S. Championships and people are like, yo, this is the dude that won the trials. Then you mess around with <laughs> that. You wasn't supposed to win the U.S. Championships. Listen, you know man. What I mean? Like you've you've lived quite a a a, 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 a quite a, a, a boxing career like to this point, man. So again, very proud of you. And, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't ask what's next. Um, you know what I mean? Like I said, Sean, <laughs> we come from that same that old school mentality. Like, for me, it's about legacy. Right? Yeah. Like, people, like, I mean, I, I don't I don't judge, like, you know, what we see now, the younger talent, in terms of everyone wants to make the most money. I mean, yeah, yeah it's a business. Boxing is a business. But I see, too, we all see too much the younger fighters focus on the purse. Mm-hmm. But for me, I always believe that the money is going to come yeah. with, the, with the performances that the better performances you put on. So for me, um, we know Shakur is obviously my mandatory, and I love Shakur. Shakur is my guy. Mm-hmm. But if I give him the opportunity, if I if I could fight the man in my division, which is Oscar Valdez, and I could do it for the lineal title, which is the Ring Magazine, which I grew up, you know, admiring as a kid from reading, you know. Ring magazine from from the time I can remember. Yeah, that's what I want to go at. That's what and 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 we clearly know it's there, it's right there because we're in the same stable. Um, Oscar Valdez, he actually expressed it before I even you know even got my hand raised against um Frampton. So if I could, that would be my choice because you know he beat the man and I give him all respect. I'm not gonna you know he he beat Miguel Bertel. A guy mm-hmm. that he was like, damn, he, a guy he wasn't even supposed to beat. Right. They actually thought that he had less of a chance against Richard than I did against Frampton. If you really, if you look back on it, yeah. And um, you, you were know, taking it after Richard for like two or three years. Yeah, and you know, yeah, and, and he got to him, and he, and he beat him, and I tip my hat to him. So it's like, you know, I'd rather go for the top of the totem pole, you know, especially if it, if it gives me another shot, also in the process to win another world title, you know, why not? But that that's just me. And before, like I said, going back to Oval, I'm sure I'm pretty sure you remember back at the um the training center though. I don't care anybody said I had one of the toughest sparring part. <laughs> all, like 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 listen, for one, I was at the time I was fighting at 141 junior junior welterweight. Yeah, I had to deal with a uh, um a, a young Adrian Bronin before he won his first world title. Yeah, I had to deal with Lamont Rose. I mean, I mean. Lamont Peterson before yeah. before he fought Amir Khan, so he yeah. was hungry. Yeah, and then I had to deal with all. Uh, I had Jorge Linares. Those those uh-huh. were my those are my three farm and them guys. Listen, I learned so much in just to know those few weeks with those yeah. guys. Yeah, I never like I never I would never forget it. But yeah, man, like that's why I tell kids a lot of my a lot of like my my experience comes from days like that. You know, just yeah. just you know the amateur looking and looking at the guys who are already at the pro level and seeing. You know that you know this man. He's getting ready for a world title. Like it's crazy. Like you know, and I'm just looking at it, and then you know, saying it, it's just it's just humbling. That's why I'm still the same way that I am today. Now, anybody else got something for him? I got one more thing. Go ahead, man. Yeah, no, I'm gonna, oh, just, another Ohio champion. I'm always happy. <laughs> hey, before you jumped on Jamel, man, I was saying that was like your Hopkins Trinidad type performance. I said I think that, that's like, funny. I said the same thing because. I'm at the age where Hopkins beat Trinidad. And it's like people feel like I'm still I'm still getting better. And that's because like um I you know and I and I and I get that to hop like learning from guys like B Hop, like being disciplined outside of boxing, away from the cameras. Like with me, when I'm not training, I'm still doing something to keep my body in shape or I'm staying out of like 
trouble where, you know, I, I don't want to get the wrong publicity. I'm not out here partying and, and, and drinking. It's like, you know, if I want to still go further in the, in, the, in, the, in the game, I have to, you know, stay disciplined outside away from, you know, the cameras when, no one, when nobody's looking. So, and I, and I give that to guys like, you know, Bernard Hopkins and, you know, and like I said, I'm just, I'm just glad that, you know, I finally had my moment, but I don't want that to be, you know, my last big moment. I still want to go out there and, and improve, you know, more. Like, and there's not people that don't know, like, like I get, I, like, I love what Sean has done for his career. We all know Terrence is my guy, but I was one of the one main ones that kept saying, I want to see that fight. And then people were like, why you want to? I said, because Sean, I said, when Sean fights, he's never in a boring fight. Mm-hmm. He's going to, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, I, and I, I told, I, I told my own team that. I said, I want to, if this fight don't happen, I want to see, I want to see Sean and Sean and Buzz fight. Yeah. And I was like, that, that is to me, that, that's a good fight. That's a good fight for boxing. And you'd be room for Bud. Yeah, I mean, nah. I mean, I'm not mad at you. Like, those are my boys. Those are, like I'm saying, those are my guys. Those are my guys. Like, and they and they know it. Like, Sean, Bud knows when, like, how how I feel. You know, with Sean. But like I said, I speak to his father all the time. Yeah. Kenny's my guy. You know what yeah. I mean? So that's how. That's how. I, like, I know Kenny since I was an amateur. Yeah. So I, like, I, I like that's one thing about me. I don't, I don't flip flop because I'm with this guy, or that guy. Even like, I'm cool with Errol. Mm-hmm. You know, me and Errol speak all the time as well. Like when Sean and Errol fought, I was looking like. That was 50 50. I'm like, I'm thinking because we knew what he was saying. Oh, Earl's gonna. I said, nah, man. I said, yo, <laughs> Sean, I said, yeah. man, listen, man, Sean gonna bring that heat. And yeah. I was at the same thing with Bud. I'm like, bro, yeah, I, I want to, like, I want to see how you know what I'm saying. I want to see all the like the welterweights. I don't care what side of the street, I do, it's just a good division. It's like, I want to, because I'm, I'm always saying my fan first. Got to do I it. these matches first. So I'm like, yeah. yeah. I just I didn't think, want to see that fight. Sure. I don't I, care like that. I want I to pick, see. I picked Bud to win. I picked Bud to win and got my mic cut like one of our first episodes. So I thought the <laughs> same yeah, thing would happen. That, 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 but no, but that just shows me how much I just love the sport. I don't get into the whole who's cool with the clicks and everything like that. Like I said, I wasn't with it when when Sean fought AB. AB's my guy. I trained yeah. with AB for years, but I was just like, hey, Sean won. I congratulated him. I was like, hey, it is what it is, and I was glad that he actually got to get to more championship fights afterwards. That's how it should be. You know, mm-hmm. you fight your way, mm-hmm. do your thing, you should be rewarded. And I'm glad he did. Yeah. So Listen, we got... Uh, boxing Ultimate Nice Guy Award. Is it Jamel Herring or Sean Porter? Uh-uh, no, oh, it's Jamel Sean. Oh, Don't no, get Sean, Sean. that game. Oh, hey. <laughs> it's Leo, Jamel Leo Herring, Shane Jr. I'm cool. I'm like cool. 10 other people, Abner I'm Mares, cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. John's top 50. I ain't tripping. I don't even want the award to be honest with you. I don't you know, know. Oh, I you know, know it is. It's not even just about that. It's about if you just be if you're just real. I don't yeah. I don't I don't believe in have to play in a character in yeah. order to in order to draw attention. I think people just like genuine good people, period. You know, yeah. we see so many too many acts in boxing. People can like when fans they 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 have so much uh, a hold to who you are with social media. They can see right through it, so it's like you know they can see like well one he was just acting like this on here, but now he's they see right through it. But if you're just the same, who, if you just go who you are, it, it draw it draws it draws more it draws more um you draw more bees with honey as they say. Listen, I'm Jamel, to some love your way, Jamel. I, I had to. Again, congratulations. We just got on Lou DeBella. He's right up there in the corner. All right, tell him I said hello though, man. No, 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 no. Hey, you can Jamel. tell me say hello. What's going on, Lou, man? <laughs> hey, congratulations, bro. That was a brilliant performance, man. Thank you, Lou. I, I remember Thank a couple you. of years back when the haters and the people that didn't know better wrote you off. You didn't write yourself off. Look at where you are, man. I'm really proud Thank of you. you. Thank you, Lou. Thank you. I mean, they, nobody's risen those those rankings quicker than you have as a champion. And, and what you've done, man, has been amazing. Like I said, I'm, I'm just glad I, I can say I earned it. I never want anything to be given to me, Lou. You know what I mean? I, I'd rather say, like, I, my thing has always been this. I'd rather be called underrated than overrated any day. Yeah. But you, you deserve a big oorah, man. Oorah. Right. Thank you, Lou. Oorah. Right. <laughs> hey, listen, before you go, because you, you, you mentioned the word legacy, and I've been kind of on this a little bit of a uh, search to see what a guy considers his legacy to be. We all are kind of speaking that word now. A lot of us are saying legacy, legacy, legacy. And I want to, I want to hear your definition of what your legacy, what you want your legacy to be. Um, You know, for me, I, I just want people to remember me as who I was outside of the ring. Like I wanted to be, you know, I want to be that fighter, you know, that inspired others 
especially being the underdog. You know, mm-hmm. I still went out there and achieved what I wanted to because I didn't allow others to keep me down. Like Lou, like Lou said, like there were people, I've been down in Shabako fight. I took a beating. No, there's no, there's no doubt about it. I took a beating, but mm-hmm. I could have easily just faded off in the wind and let that fight define my whole entire career. Or it gave me an opportunity to, okay, to bounce back and, mm-hmm. you know, show not only who I am as a fighter, but my character and how mm-hmm. I, you know, carry myself. I didn't make any excuses and here I am today. And so I want people to just remember my legacy as, you know, just the man that I was and, and the people that I've reached and touched over the years. Amen. We appreciate you coming on today, man. We will have you yes. back real Thank soon, you. man. Oh, have yeah. Go anytime, party. Sean, man. Y'all take care. Love you go, man. Y'all be, yes, sir. Y'all be good. Take, take care. Much, man. Don't tell me you didn't enjoy what you saw because I know you did. What you need to do now, hit that subscribe button, hit the like, hit that notification button. Check us out every week, every Tuesday, something new for you right here on the Portaway Podcast.